There has been this trend in recent years where some producers decide to shift from individual calf housing to pair housing or group housing. And if a farmer is already using individual outdoor hutches, there is a way that they can adjust that housing by connecting two hut hutches by just modifying the fence. So we'd seen this out in the field and we thought, okay, we can try this at our research facility and investigate if maybe there are some previously untapped benefits to pair housing that haven't been investigated. So some previous research has researchers had hypothesized that maybe if calves are housed in pairs or groups, this could allow them to huddle together for warmth and maintain their body heat. Hi, I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is Dr. Jennifer Van Oss. Uh, she's an assistant professor at, and extension specialist at University of Wisconsin at Madison, specializing a lot in animal behavior and animal welfare. Uh, what we're going to do today is discuss a paper uh, or a project she, uh, she led with, with a graduate student concerning uh, some calf uh, housing and calf uh, cold stress. Jennifer, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Um, I'd like to start, why don't you introduce or give a little background on the students since they do most of the work in these projects. So my former PhD student, now Dr. Kim Reuscher, is at Tennessee State University in Nashville. And she actually came from Texas and had a strong interest in calves. And she really wanted to work on heat stress in calves. And so she persuaded me this would be a good idea to look at in Wisconsin. And I told her, we have a deal as long as you also look at cold stress. <laughs> so she had to adapt and cope with the winter here in Wisconsin. But we recently published both papers, one on calves dealing with heat stress in the summer in Wisconsin and one on calves dealing with cold stress in the winter in Wisconsin. And the, the basically, you looked at pair housing um, and, and cold stress. So why don't you give us a little background on the treatments you, you used and, and what you measured? Yeah, that's right. So there has been this trend in recent years where some producers decide to shift from individual calf housing to pair housing or group housing. And if a farmer is already using individual outdoor hutches, there is a way that they can adjust that housing by connecting two hut hutches by just modifying the fence. So we'd seen this out in the field and we thought, okay, we can try this at our research facility and investigate if maybe there are some previously untapped benefits to pair housing that haven't been investigated. So some previous research has researchers had hypothesized that maybe if calves are housed in pairs or groups, this could allow them to huddle together for warmth and maintain their body heat so that they're expending less energy just for maintenance and can direct more of that towards growth or health. And so we wanted to explicitly evaluate this in this outdoor hutch setting. So we compared calves, which were individually housed in hutches against ones which were pair housed. So it wasn't two calves in the same hutch. It was two hutches connected with a fence and the calves could choose where to spend their time. And what, what did, well, first of all, give us a, a little review of what cold stress in Wisconsin is like. So <laughs> we have several months of the year, maybe about half the year, where we're under what would be considered the lower critical temperature for a calf, which depends on their age. So with newborns, they're less cold tolerant. And as they grow and they have a greater, um, sorry, a lesser surface area to mass ratio, they lose less heat. And also the rumen starts developing and they're generating more body heat. And so that lower critical temperature does depend on the age, but we're below that for several months of the year. And so this was something that we wanted to evaluate is in these conditions, in this continental climate, would having another companion allow them to huddle together for warmth, as well as there's another concept called social facilitation. When there's multiple animals together, they kind of influence each other's behavior. And so farmers had actually told us anecdotally that they see this social facilitation with pair house calves, or one will get up to eat, and then the other one will follow, and so they're a little bit more active, and and they stay eating. Okay, what what did you basically find then in this study? Let's start with behavior measurements. Yeah, so in this study, we had two different phases, which we repeated at three ages. So we looked at four weeks of age, which is when calves were at the peak of their milk feeding program. And so on our research dairy, we feed two gallons a day, which is 
seven point liters a day of pasteurized milk. So that's why we looked at four weeks old. We also looked at six weeks old, which was right before they were going to begin step down weaning. And then we looked at nine weeks old, which was right after they had been completely weaned, but they were still in their pre weaning housing. And at each of these time periods, we had a couple days where we shut the calves into their hutches just using a wire panel. So there was still airflow, but we wanted to standardize the amount of time the calves spent inside so we could evaluate the effect of the calves generating body heat on the microclimate inside the hutch, as well as on the calves thermoregulatory responses. We call that the restriction phase. And then after the restriction days in each of these three weeks, we monitored their behavior using trail cameras. So every 15 minutes, we took a snapshot of where the calves were located, and we had validated this 15 minute interval against shorter intervals to see, is that an accurate way to capture what they're doing? And so we looked at, for the pair house calves, which hutch were they in, and were they inside the same hutch together? And for the individually housed calves, we just evaluated were they inside or outside. And so we were able to quantify for the pair house calves, how much time do they spend together or separate and how much time do they spend inside or outside? And we were able to compare that between the individually housed hutches and the, the pair house calves. So what we found there was the calves spent the majority of their time inside the hutches, which was not surprising in the winter. So really they just emerged to, to drink milk. But we did find a statistical difference in the amount of time they spent outside if they were individually housed or pair housed. So the pair housed calves did actually spend a little bit more time outside. Again, majority of their time inside. <laughs> and we, we unfortunately were not able to see what they were doing when they were outside because we were looking in 15 minute intervals. We couldn't see were they playing, what were they doing. Um, and so we suspect that it could be that the pair house calves were indeed better able to cope with the cold. And so they were able to spend a little bit more time outside. Maybe they were playing, we're not really sure. And so that's something that we could investigate in future studies. And then also in terms of their behavior, the pair house calves did prefer to spend most of their time inside the same hutch, which is not surprising because we found this in the summer as well. Other studies using the same kind of housing system also found calves do prefer to spend most of their time together. But that doesn't mean that if you're gonna pair house, you should only provide one hutch because it is important to give them the option to spend time separately, especially as they get older, having two calves as they approach weaning age inside the same hutch, it, the hutch is gonna get quite dirty. You're gonna have less clean air available to them as well. And so it is important to at least give them that option to have the additional space. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. So I guess to, to wrap up, do you think with what you learned and what you know on, from other projects, um, is pair housing beneficial in, in winter or any time, I guess. I would say, yes, this study showed some preliminary evidence that there is this additional benefit of pair housing that we hadn't seen before, where it potentially it does provide some coping with cold stress. But many other studies have shown a, a whole list of other types of benefits of pair housing. So um, that includes the calf's social development, their learning abilities, actually their dry matter intake and growth. Um, public perception as well. So there's a lot of different reasons to pair house. But that being said, it doesn't mean that that transition is always seamless if producers want to move from individual housing to pairs or groups. So we have put together a bunch of resources here at UW-Madison. So if you go to my website, there's free articles that we've written that help people kind of walk through that decision-making process. And we talk about some of the ingredients for success because we know a lot of farmers are successfully pair group housing and there are some common challenges that people seem to encounter and we have some ideas for solutions there. But yes, I would say it's something that can be very beneficial in a lot of different ways. Great. Well, this has been, been interesting. I hope people go to the website to get more information. But thank you for joining us. Thank you.